Well, good morning, church, and welcome to Alive Fellowship Church. Well, we're in our series that uh, I have entitled A Marriage to, to Cheer For, and we've kind of taken a, uh, now that football is getting started, we've taken a football approach to this. And, you know, uh, we talked about some terms and some words from football and how they might apply to our marriage, and that was in week one. We also talked about the fact that we must have a game plan. We and I, and I said this, we must play for the team of we, not me. And we took a week and we talked about our offense, those things that we can do offensively moving forward for our marriage. And that is we surrender our will for the success of, of, uh, of the team. We serve. We have a, a very uh, serving lifestyle. We're very unselfish. And then we took a week and we talked about uh, the defense, how to defend, how to defend our marriage. We talked about defending our eyes, defending our mouths, defending our motives, uh, defending our thought life and always being transparent. So that's kind of what we did in the first uh, several weeks. Now today, I'm going to talk about something else that I think is important and it's probably not thought of a lot within uh, a marriage. And I want to talk about loyalty. Uh, not just loyalty, but team loyalty. Loyalty and commitment are commodities that are slipping away in our culture. And you should go here, you should go here. I don't have to be loyal. I can do whatever I want. Now, in football, I mean, think about it. What would you think if a Dallas Cowboy player was on the sidelines of a Pittsburgh Steeler team during the game? Uh, we would become very upset with that. Uh, it, it, we wouldn't tolerate it in a football game. We just would not tolerate that. Man, you're in the enemy camp. Uh, but we're allowing it in our homes. We're allowing it in our marriages. We wouldn't tolerate it in a football game, but we're allowing it in our home. People are being unfaithful to one another, abandoning their marriage commitment and vows. If we're going to build a long-lasting marriage... Uh, a God-honoring marriage, then we need to have a very high level of loyalty and commitment. And so then the question becomes, well, why? Well, why? Why should we be loyal to one another? Well, I want to take you back, <coughs> excuse me, I want to take you back to the very beginning of time in Genesis chapter 2, when this whole kind of man and woman thing started, and the Bible says this, so the Lord God caused the man to fall uh, into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. Uh, he says, at last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called a woman uh, because she was taken from man. And then verse 24. Now this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Now, when you, when you read that, it really should drive home really just a major point of loyalty. I mean, I mean think about it. We all all are very, very protective of our kids because they, they came from us, right? This came from me. This is a part of me. Two people came together, had a physical relationship. God blessed us with a with the child. And so we, we really take that and we go, man, this is my kid. Well, the same is true uh, about our wives and about our husbands, that, that she came from me. Man, there's no difference. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you some areas uh, of loyalty that are vital to our marriage if we are going to have a God-honoring marriage. And the first one I think of is loyalty has to be our priority. Uh, it, it has to be the first thing in our lives. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is first. It is the very foundation of our lives, and we have to be loyal to that. So we have to be loyal in our priorities, like what is first, what is second, what is third. We have to be loyal to that progression. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 says, you must not have any other God before uh, me. So Jesus is to be our rock, our foundation, he is really the umbilical cord uh, of our life. And when my vertical relationship with God is healthy, it breathes life 
into my horizontal uh, relationships. And so we must be loyal, loyal in the priorities of our life. And that begins with Jesus uh, Christ. Now, the second thing we should be loyal to when we're talking about in this progression, in this uh, priorities, is to our spouse. You know, Genesis 2.24 this explains, we just read this, this explains why a, fa a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. <clears throat> Did you know that there are over 40 verses in the Bible that speak to the fact that our spouse should be number two? She, she should be right there, right after God. Matthew 19. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother out of the New Testament and joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Uh, since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. So there is no, there's not even a, a, a thought that our spouse is not number two. Now, we may not put them in that place. We may be struggling in this loyalty idea, but the scriptures make it clear that our spouse is to be number two in, in our life. There is no one uh, or any anything on this earth that is more important than your spouse except for your personal walk with Jesus Christ. Now, I understand that that's easier said than done because we have so many things that are coming after us. We have so many things that are being poured into us that sometimes it makes it very, very difficult. But we must live this out. All too often, we allow other things to take a higher seat in our lives. And, you know, we might have God as number one, and He is our foundation, but we're not putting our wives there, or we're not keeping it in order. And, and I've said this in week one. If God is not number one in your life, if He's not the rock, if He's not the foundation, then it really doesn't matter who and what is two, three, four, five, and six, because the foundation is wrong. I mean, it's all wrong if God is not one. But 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 now watch. If your spouse is not number two right after God, if your spouse is not number two, then I would say then God is not number one. Because God makes it clear that it is Him and then it is our spouse. And if she is not number two in our lives, then don't tell then don't tell me that God is number one. You cannot say that God is the most important thing in the world to me and your spouse not be the second most important thing in the world to you. Greatest way to love your kids is to invest in your marriage. Here's another area of loyalty. The third in this area of being loyal uh, to uh, to our lives. It's God, our spouse, and the third, it's our relationship with our children. Uh, they come from you. It's a biblical uh, progression. And then number fourth would be our relation. Uh, number four would be our relationship with believers and the church. It's our attachment to the body of Christ. The Bible makes it very, very clear that the church is an important part of your life. Uh, it is. It is so vital to your life, to your growth, and it helps you grow, and, and it helps you have people love on you, and then you also, in turn, do that for the church. And then, of course, number five would be our jobs, our career, uh, our calling, our occupation, and, and then there would be others. We could list all kinds of priorities, but let me just say this. Our job is not the most important thing in our lives. It's up there. It's up there. Now, why is it up there? Why is our job so up there? Well, because, because it really supports number uh, one through four. It, it supports our church. Uh, it supports your relationship with God. It supports your wife. It supports your kids. And look, if we get these priorities out of line, life is not going to work. So we know that it's God, our spouse, our kids, our, our, our ministry with Believers Church, stuff like that, and then our job. Now watch. If, if I lose my job, if I lose my job, which is number five, then, then the things below it are still okay. They're still strong. I'm still depending on God. My relationship with my wife is still great. My kids are loving me and I'm loving them. I'm still involved with my church. I'm hurting because I lost my job, but it doesn't crumble. Now watch what happens. If I make my job number one in my life, so if it is the foundation, and then maybe I put my kids and my wife or, or church, and then God is like way out of line. What happens when I lose my job then? 
then everything begins to just crumble. The things that destroy many marriages many times are good things, not bad things. So our priority shifted from the marriage relationship to something else, and many times they are good things. And so a job is a good thing, but if it is out of line in God's structure or priorities, then it can be a negative thing, whether it's our kids, whether it's our career. And before long, we become very good at our careers and uh, that we let that priority begin to slip and it damages our other relationships. And the key in all of this is keeping everything in its rightful place, treating it like that, and having balance. I think about our homes and our houses. Wanting to have the perfect yard, the garden. We all want to win the neighborhood contest. We want to have friends, always having people over and doing things with others. But uh, we may not be uh, spending enough time with the ones that we uh, need to. Uh, busyness of life. It could be soccer games, schedule. Those are all good things that can become the enemy of best things. Uh, one author said this, now neglect the rest of the world if you have to, but never neglect each other. Loyalty is a priority, and it must be God and your wife and your kids, your church ministry, uh, other believers in Jesus Christ, and your job. And so we have to do a better job of being loyal and making our loyalty to that structure a uh, priority. And now, the second thing is we have to be loyal in our purity. And so we have to be loyal in our priority to that structure, and we also have to be loyal in purity. God created, and we talked a little bit about this in week one, and we'll talk about it more uh, uh, in a couple weeks. But God created one man and one woman in His image, His glory, His holiness, and His purity. And there is there is innocence in purity. You remember back in Genesis 2.25, now the man and his wife were both naked, naked but they felt no shame. You see, before sin entered the world, they were naked. They were innocent. They were uh, vulnerable. They were transparent and they felt no shame. So sin enters the picture. They begin to feel shame. Uh, and, and I you know, I kind of picture their reaction going, oh, man, what's that? Cover that out. I, I wonder if Eve ever asked, hey, do these fig leaves uh, make my thighs le look too big? And I, I think a Adam would go, hey, do these fig leaves come in a biggie size uh, to cover up my 24 pack? Now, why do they think all of that? Because purity now, because of sin, has been broken. The light had 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 really kind of changed. Uh, the glory of God had had left their union because of the sin. True intimacy comes from revealing the glory of God in absolute purity. We must love our spouse with the purity of Christ. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Give honor to marriage. Now think about what he's saying. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. We must have a vow and commit uh, to in this area of purity. I will be loyal to you by maintaining my loyalty to God. I must maintain purity in an intimate walk with God to achieve pure and true intimacy with my spouse. I think of Psalms 119, verse 9. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander uh, from your commands. And in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we need to be loyal with our eyes and with our thoughts. Uh, Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. And so we need to be thinking about what is true and right and pure and lovely and admirable. And so we need to be loyal uh, with our bodies. Ephesians 5 speaks to that. says, Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, uh, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. And so we need to do all we can to stay loyal in our priorities. It is God. 
It is your spouse. It is your kids. It's your church. It's your ministry. It's other believers. And it is job. We have to have loyalty in that. And we also have to remain loyal in our purity, what we look at, our thoughts, our eyes, everything like that. And then, and then I believe we have to be loyal in our partnership, in our partnership. Uh, let me explain this to you. When you were married, you entered into a covenant partnership. You remember Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, where it says, two become one flesh. Basically, it's, it's we're no longer two. Uh, the two is no longer there. We are now one, right? One mission, one purpose, and that is to glorify God together, right? So Ecclesiastes 4.9 says this, two people are better off than one. They can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two people can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And so we must understand the power of the covenant that we made and that we have. Uh, all that I have is yours and all that you have is mine. Our two lives are melded together, uh, not one of dominance or control over the other, right? Ephesians 5, and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, right? Uh, I, I found this joke, and it says this, uh, in heaven there were two lines waiting to get in. Over one of the lines was a sign that said, for all the men that were dominated by their wives. I mean, this line was so long, as far as the eyes could see, uh, and it was a sign that said, uh, for those people, those men who were dominated by their wives. Now, then there was another line that had, but there's only one guy in it. And it had a large sign that said, for, for men who are not dominated by their wives. So there's only one guy in that line. You have this line, and it is as long as you can go. And this line, there's one guy. And so Peter comes up to him and he says, hey, why are you standing in this line? Well, the guy says, don't ask me. My wife told me to shut up and stand over here and not ask any questions, right? So it's not like that. Either we are becoming more united or we are becoming more divided. And anytime we're divided, our marriage is in big trouble. And the Bible says in verse 17, he knew their thoughts. And so he said, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. Now look what it says. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And so what I want to do in our remaining time is I want to, I want to kind of show you the opposite in a couple areas of a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. We know that a kingdom that is divided by civil war, when we're fighting from within, it's just doomed. And then he adds to that, a family splintered by feuding is going to fall apart. So let's talk about this spiritually just for a second. So the opposite of a family splintered and feuding that will fall apart, I think, is found in Matthew 18. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. That is like you and I coming together spiritually and praying for something and agreeing for something. And then I also think there's a physical side to this in 1 Corinthians 7. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. And then take a look at verse 5. Don't, uh, do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more uh, completely to prayer. Afterward, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of sec uh, uh, self-control. And so a family that is splintered is going to be feuding and it's going to fall apart. It can happen spiritually, but the opposite of that is us coming together. It can, have phys uh, it can happen physically. The opposite of that is us coming together in the physical relationship. It can also happen financially. I believe with all of my heart that, that husband and wives ought to pull their resources to take care of the things that they need to take care of. It brings accountability uh, for both of you, and it makes both of you work on it together. And this is also true in parenting. 
where both people are responsible for parenting and training. And we're going to deal with that specifically uh, next week. And so there should be loyalty in our priorities, in our, in our life with Christ, our spouse. So we have to be loyal to that structure. We have to be loyal in our purity. We also have to be loyal in our partnership. And then number four, we have to be loyal in our pursuit. Genesis 2.24. Now look what it says. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the word joined or united right there is the word dabak. It means to cling to or adhere to, but it also has a, a pursuit catch to it. That means we are to pursue something, and we are born, supposed to be joined together to what we are pursuing. Now, by, by nature, we pursue what we don't have. And then once we have it and we've achieved it, we tend to kind of slack off. Now, most of the time, when we get what we desire, we kind of kind of let up a little bit. Then, uh, when we get into our marriage and we kind of uh, become comfortable, we might become complacent, right? Uh, we always think that the grass looks greener on the other side. We would say, water your own yard. And the, the reason that the grass looks greener on the other side is because we don't see the mess. We don't see the weeds. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't see those things. And so we must continue to pursue our spouses long after we have entered the marriage. Uh, work at the marriage. I mean, think about it. Think about it practically. Pick any area of life. Can I neglect a certain area, not work at it, and see it grow and succeed? Well, absolutely not. Whether it's our physical body, it's at work, it's business, your yard, we don't fertilize, we don't mow, it will deteriorate. So when why then would couples whine and complain and moan that we don't have a good godly marriage uh, for uh, when for years we have neglected those things to keep it as a good godly marriage? And so let me close with this. Let me, let me share with all of the men and all the ladies how to continue to pursue your husband and your wife. How to pursue her. And guys, let me start with you. I want you to pursue her with your one conversation. Uh, she, she, she loves to talk to you. One of the reasons she married you is because you would talk to her. You would talk to her on the phone for hours about absolutely nothing. You remember this. Uh, you say goodbye. No, no, no. You'd be the first one to say goodbye. Look, she just wants to know that you're listening and that you care. Uh, and that you are hearing what she is saying. Uh, and then also, pursue her with your thoughtfulness. Call her in the middle of the day right? Uh, and she's going to say, why are you calling? Well, I was just thinking about you. Do that. Now, for the rest of the day, she will be thinking about you, and that's a good thing, guys. She loves to know that she is in your thoughts. So you can't live off yesterday's love. Are you thinking about me today? We would all want that to be true. And then pursue her with your affection. Guys, thoughtfulness and affection are not the same thing. She wants you to verbalize your emotion and, and love to her, value her, admire her. She wants you to not only say, I love you, but she wants to hear, I love you because. Not tied to sex, and we dealt with that in week one. Also, pursue her with your protection. She loves the feeling of being protected. She wants to know that her heart is secure with you, trusting you with uh, her, her secrets, her emotions, uh, physical security, emotional security, financial security, security of pursuing her with protection. So men, you pursue her with your conversation, thoughtfulness, affection, protection. And lastly, ladies, you pursue him. So what do you pursue him with? You pursue him with your admiration. Tell him you believe in him. Tell him that you respect him and you admire him. When, when after a Sunday is over, when Karen says, hey, well, that was a great message. It really spoke to me. It, 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 that means so much to me coming uh, from her. Uh, ladies, we can live off of stuff like that. But when we criticize and we uh, put him uh, down, you will begin to see your husband kind of shrink before your eyes. And so you pursue him with your admiration. And then also you pursue him with reassurance. And that implies that, that he might be insecure. And I would say, ladies, that's right. That's exactly right. We may not like to admit it, but basically there are a lot of areas that we men 
are very insecure. Let him know that you believe in him. And so we pursue him with our admira uh, admiration. We assure him. We also pursue him with our support. Uh, one of the greatest things is with your support in, in prayer. Support him in his job and in his business. Support him in his uh, in the home. Be on his side and support him. And number four, uh, support him with your passion. Uh, put it in capital letters, you can circle it. Ladies, uh, the world is pursuing him with passions. TV pursues his passions. The internet pursues his passions. Uh, the woman down the hallway at the office pursues his passions. Proverbs 5, drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessings for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. And so there is a, a really just a, a beautiful picture of how we are to be. And ladies, that's, that is so easy when you are pursuing your husbands with passions. And this is so important. Uh, if you, I, one author said it this way, if you keep your husband's cup full, he will not be interested in drinking from another fountain. And that is so true. That is so true. And that's what that verse is teaching. And so I just want to share with you and pray for you to get what you've never had. You must do what you've never, never done. And that means we are loyal. We are loyal and we are committed in our purity, our thoughts, the things that we look at, uh, our structure, our homes. We, we must be a loyal couple if we're going to make this uh, thing uh, work. And just before I pray for you, next Sunday we're going to be talking about the family and what happens when kids are a part of the, of the, uh, of the home. Uh, we've all got kids and we've been blessed by kids. Uh, but what role and how do we treat each other when kids are involved? And I hope that you'll join us then. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. And God, as we begin to uh, think about our relationships, Father, loyalty and commitment is so vital. So would you help us to be loyal to our wives in, in uh, our priorities, in our purities, in our pursuits, uh, in our fellowship, in our partnership with one another. Will we pursue them uh, with all of our hearts? And we tell you that we love you and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.